From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. There is so much going on in the world and we're so grateful that we can come into your home or wherever you watch the program and enlighten you with some of the things we don't hear maybe uh, locally in our newspapers or television. And World Health Organization says Ebola outbreak could last forever. Well, you know, many, many Christians today but believe that we are approaching Armageddon. Whoa, that word means something. And that the four horsemen, you know, there are four horsemen that Jesus gave in the book of Revelation, four of them, that would point toward Armageddon. What does it really mean, Jack? Everybody wants to know. It's the greatest time of war in the history of the world. We talk about World War I, World War II, where 50 million died. Well, World War III, as Pope Francis calls it, is what the Bible calls Armageddon, Revelation 16, 16. And we're going to see one half of the population of the world die during that time. And we have the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And we have the white horse, red horse, black horse, and pale horse, a greenish, sickly looking animal. We're going to deal with all of it today, but listen to this. And Jesus said in Matthew 24, 21, for then shall be great tribulation such as never was since the beginning of the world to this time, no nor ever shall be again. And there are going to be three invasions that we're going to see today. And we've got the Muslim people saying they're planning for it. Israeli people saying, so are we. And many nations of the world are getting ready for this hour of history. And today, I'm going to tell you, the only good news is this. I believe born-again Christians are going to be evacuated, lifted out of here before it begins. Amen, Jesus, come quickly, absolutely. Now, we're going to deal with those four horsemen. I'm talking to a girl just this morning, and she says, four horsemen? I never heard of that before. Well, we're going to go one at a time and let Jack explain why the Bible so explicitly gave us four horsemen that points to the coming of the Lord. I like the first one, especially the white horse. This horseman is riding on a white horse. I like that, don't you? What does that represent, Jack? Okay, in Revelation 19:11, Jesus, the Prince of Peace, Isaiah 9, 6, sits on a white horse and he comes to put an end to the battle of Armageddon and bring peace upon the earth. So this individual in Revelation 6, verses 1 and 2, wants to imitate the Christ who comes. And so he comes to power on a peace platform and he has a bow without arrows. And he comes to challenge the world. And the Bible teaches in Revelation 13, verse 1, this is the world dictator we call the Antichrist. And he has control over all kindreds, tongues, people, and nations, Revelation chapter 13, verse 7. And all the world worships him, thinking he's that Christ, verse 8. But there is a false prophet who reigns with him in Revelation 13, 11 to 15. And he has the two horns of a lamb identifying him with the Christian faith. For John the Baptist, when he saw Jesus, said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. So this is a Christian personality reigning with this world dictator. And he's promoting the one world religion, the one world church. And soon I'll be telling you where this is all headed because we are facing that hour very, very soon. Well, now this one gets the power on this peace platform. How do you know that? Daniel eleven twenty one. he comes in peaceably. Verse 24, he enters in peaceably and he makes a seven year contract. Daniel 9.27, and that's called Shabua in Hebrew or Heptad in Greek and means seven years. But after 42 months, it's broken. All hell breaks loose. And I'm telling you, folks, we are right 
at that moment. And all hell is going to be here very, very soon. What you say, Jesus, there never has anything been like it in the past, nor will there ever be anything like it again in the coming hours. But I will return to put a stop to it. Revelation chapter 11, verse 18, and set up my glorious kingdom on earth over Jerusalem. Luke 1, verses 32 and 33. And that's the story of the white horse. He's coming. Well, there's that white horse trying to set up a, a peaceful government that's worldwide. And we have a 10 division world empire. It fails. All right, let's look at the second horseman. The white horseman, the second one, comes on a red horse. I'm going to ask Jack again. What does the red horse mean? In Revelation chapter 6, verses 3 and 4, we have this rider on the red horse who takes peace from the earth. As I said a moment ago, the peace contract lasts for 42 months, and then all hell breaks loose on the earth. And who is the one that's behind it? Ezekiel 38, verses 1 and 2. Gog, Magog, Meshach, Tubal, all cities in Rosh, or Russia in Greek, or Russia in English today. And guess what? This writer says in Ezekiel 38, 11, I am going to take peace from the earth. But he is the one associated with Meshach, Moscow, a city in Rosh, Russia. Oh, Jack, so interesting. Called the Red Horse. Now, you know, we don't have to wonder if this horseman is ready to ride because of the political battles and religious jihad. Take a look, please, at some of these headlines. Islamists gather to fight Mohammed's promised Armageddon. Israel told prepare for Armageddon and forget U.S. help. Pope Francis warms up. What? World War III, and ISIS threatens Vatican, urges Muslims to kill every crusader. They say we're going to conquer Rome, break the crosses, and enslave the women. Italian party leader ISIL threatening entire world. Oh, dear. Here's a report. Merger of ISIS and Al-Qaeda could cripple civilized world. Well, here's that red horse. How far will he go? Putin's push to recharge Russia. Putin to put Russian bases in Latin America, and how U.S.-Russia enmity aids Beijing. And then from contempt to camaraderie, they're talking about Russia and China, and U.S. Admiral China to have nuclear missiles on subs very, very soon. Do you see, friends, how that red horse could ride? Oh, my, Jack, we're there. Now, Russia and her Muslim allies found in Daniel 11:40, Isaiah 17, 1, Ezekiel 38, 5 to 7, and Psalm 83, verses 5 to 7, are defeated in Ezekiel 39, verses 1, 2, 12, and 13. Seven months it takes to bury the dead, and every available human being is at the job. And then China comes down, the gray hordes, from the east, Revelation 16, 12. The Bible is so clear, and that's why these guys are really friends now, and they're going to come together. They have signed the Shanghai Agreement Treaty, where Russia and China will fight together. Now, this will be the bloodiest battle in history. Revelation 14, verse 20 says that the blood flowed to the horse's bridles by the space of 1,600 furlongs. A river of blood, 200 miles long. That's the length of the nation of Israel. And the battle is described in Revelation 9, 14 to 18. Loose the four demons in the great river Euphrates to slay a third part of mankind. And the number of the army was 200,000, 200 million. And by these three was the third part of men killed by the fire, smoke, brimstone, atomic warfare. Oh, folks, God help us as to what's coming. Thank God the rapture will be here and we'll hear the cry, come up hither. Revelation 4, when it'll sweep through the heavenlies and the twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15, 52. That's our only hope at this point. Mm, Jack, I'm going to go on to the third horseman, the black horse, global financial destruction. Here you see it, stock swoon in frenzy day. Clamor for stocks resumes, but fears lurk in market. Risk of deflation feeds global fears. And Dow erases. 
gains for a year as global fears rattle the market. And here's one more. Venezuela's currency hits new low. That is worldwide, friends. That's not just here in the United States. Rex, hello, that's Revelation chapter 6, verses 5 and 6. And the rider on the black horse has a pair of balances because of the economic problems and the hunger that's going on. And it says, he's crying out a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. And a measure was a day's wages, and all they could get was 16 ounces of bread or whatever they were buying. Now, Jesus talked about that in the book of Revelation, chapter 18, verse 10, for in no one hours or judgment come. Verse 17, for when in one hour all her riches has come to nothing. And verse 19, for in one hour she made desolate. It's here. Oh, Jack, it is here. And now I want to go to the fourth horse, which is the pale horse that pictures disease. Take a look at this. World Health Organization, West Africa, Ebola. Deaths near 4,500. Ebola infection rate may rise to 10,000 new cases per week. And then Ebola outbreak could last forever. Mosquito virus that walloped Caribbean spreads in U.S. West Nile virus threat growing. Deadly bird flu mutation sparks contagion concerns. And then, of course, the killer Spanish flu. Could it happen again? Superbugs could cast the world back into the dark ages, David Cameron says. I'm going to go right to Jack Van Impey to explain this for us. Oh, what a book, Revelation chapter 6, verses 7 and 8. He said, I saw a pale horse, and his name was called Death, and hell followed with him, and power was given unto him over one-fourth of the population of the earth to kill with sword, hunger, death, and and the beasts of the field were the generation. All four things are here now. Jesus is about to come. Oh, yes, Jack, Jesus is about to come. How wonderful. Remember right up front of the program, I said the four horsemen pointed to the return of the Lord. Oh, how good it is to know the Lord's coming back. Thy will be done on earth. Are you ready? Is Jesus in your heart? Is Jesus your Savior? Will you please pray this prayer with Jack? opening your heart to the Lord to be your Savior, Jack. Every sign is here. Don't put it off, folks. Lord Jesus, Savior of the world, the one who shed that blood to cleanse me from every sin I've ever committed, and I've committed them, Lord, and I'm sorry, and I'm trusting in you now. Jesus, be my Savior. Come into my heart. Wash me today so I can be with you because every sign says you're coming soon and I want to be there. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Amen. How good it is to know that when you open your heart to the Lord, you are his child. You've been forgiven of everything. Write to me. There's my address. If you pray that prayer, I'll send you this wonderful little book that first steps in a new direction. We need to be walking that direction with the Lord. Our author of the week, Showdown with Iran, talking about everything in here that we've been explaining and elaborating on it. And here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Bob. To order your copy of the Showdown with Iran book with a bonus DVD, The Mideast Crisis, Can Israel Survive? Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impey Ministries. Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impey Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, N9A6Y1. Oh, thank you, Bob. I do want you to have this in your home. It's so very important because, you know, the threat of war with Iran is growing every single day, and you need to know all the details. It's very, very thorough. You need to have this book. And I got a bonus for you. And we're going to be talking about Israel also, as well as uh, the Mideast crisis. Oh, please, make the call or write to us, Showdown with Iran, and my bonus can Israel survive? If ever we needed to be looking up and talking to the Lord, it's now. 
I love this closing. You'll never get a busy signal on the prayer line to heaven. Look forward to being at home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.